Hello you beautiful audience. This is Reddit Stories. And today's topic is. 3 Creepy Stories. Part 96. Story 1. The God of Depression. I've woken up early in the morning and the God of Depression has visited me again, and how do I know he has visited me again? I feel despair, I feel so low and I have thoughts of darkness and it's definitely the God of Depression and I am delighted he has visited me again. The God of Depression is a sociable one and he visits many people even my next door neighbor who has serious depression and she starts shouting and throwing things when she feels despair, agony, and feelings of low mood. The God of Depression likes to visit. When I was on my way to work the God of Depression visited me again while I was experiencing low mood and agony at having to travel to a place I didn't want to go to in my car. I shouted out to the God of Depression while in my car as I was so grateful for the God of Depression visiting me again. I even got out of my car and I fell to my knees thanking the God of Depression visiting me. When I was at work the God of Depression visited me again as I was feeling unhappy, hopeless, low self-esteem, and finding no pleasure in things and I was so grateful a God was visiting me again. I shouted out loud to the God of Depression in such joy as I couldn't believe that such a being would visit me so many times. The God of Depression even stayed with me when I got fired for shouting to myself at work and the God of Depression was still present when I had to pack my things and as I was feeling so much fear, despair, desperate and low angry moods for not knowing how I was going to eat and how I was going to pay bills. The God of Depression is always there and you would be able to feel him on the lowest moods when all you want to do is nothing. The God of Depression has visited me again when I haven't paid bills or showered and my place is a mess. I know the God of Depression is here as I am feeling foul with low mood and scary thoughts. It's the God of Depression all right and I happily shouted out to the God of Depression as I was grateful for it being present again in my life. It's the only thing present in my life. <coughs> Story 2. The Thing in the Basement. Hello all, this is my very first Reddit post. Let me start off by saying I have so much to say while this is all fresh in my brain. Anywho, I am a 19 year old male currently in college. I started to have this dream about a month after I moved into the school's dorms. I have never been someone who dreams let alone have any bad dreams, I normally just sleep through them and get an exciting thrill, like watching a horror movie. But this dream is different, I wake up in a startled panic with paranoia and a sense of dread. The dream always starts off with me in an unrecognizable basement, I'm assuming it's supposed to be mine. To give some context thought, there is two basements, the main basement where there is a living room type room with a pool table, gaming consoles, a flat screen TV and a bar. The second basement is a pitch black room and you can only see into it enough to make out that the walls down the stairs are made out of cement. Although I have in previous dreams visited this second basement, but they weren't nightmares. It was a fun explorative dream of me playing with my younger brother in this basement as children. The second basement was a series of rooms and corridors with hidden passageways and secret rooms. In the start of this nightmare I am in the first basement normally watching TV or playing a game. I end up getting bored or tired and start packing up to go upstairs. As I near the exit of the room and get close to the stairs I get a deep sense of dread and I can feel it in real life, you know when you can feel something in your actual body but you're still sleeping. As I round the corner I see her, there's a little girl standing there about 8 or 9 years old. She looks to be in rough shape and she's holding a generic doll of sorts. She starts harassing me to go and play with her in the second basement. It feels wrong when I interact with her, I know subconsciously she doesn't want to play, she has evil intent. The feeling shakes me to my core, and I go numb. I hastily make my way to the stairs to start going up, it's only one flight of stairs but they get longer as I am running. The bottom of the stairs get further away but the top isn't getting closer. The little girl or the thing, keeps pleading and begging for me to go and play with her. She says things like I wish you would come and play with me you have to come back. In my heart I know that the words I wish, I want or I need should ever come out of your mouth when interacting with this thing. 
I have a feeling she makes your wishes, wants and needs come true in a sickening and twisted way. It's just my intuition and my gut. I finally make it to the top of the stairs after a long stressful and emotionally draining horror movie type escape scene, I open the door and look back. The thing leans up against the wall in the stairwell and continues to plead with me. I know better than to humor with this thing but I stand and I talk for a moment or two. I reply I can't tonight, I want tea. I realize what a mistake I have made I quickly start to scream. No I don't want to do anything with you, when the door slams shut and the doll is sitting upstairs beside me. I begin to run and scream for someone to help me, and that's when I wake up, often drenched head to toe in sweat and I become so paranoid and full of dread I end up sleeping with the light on. I have had this dream in the past but I simply just declined her at the door to the main floor of the house and I am not bothered. I have a feeling that thing isn't allowed past the doorway to the main floor unless invited in some way. I feel like these dreams won't stop until she has what she wants. Me going into that dark concrete basement with her. It'll keep you guys updated though as soon as this happens again I will post an update. Story 3 Super Mario CD How I stumbled across Super Mario CD, a year ago I was searching around the internet looking for something to study to keep my mind active during the pandemic and I came across a reddit post about Mario in the r slash lost media. I was curious about this thing since really the only Mario lost media I knew was Mario 128 or Super Mario Wacky World but it wasn't any of them. The title was Super Mario CD where is it? I'd never heard of the Super Mario CD before but what came to me was Sonic CD and so I thought it was like a clone of Sonic CD made by Nintendo but apparently it wasn't. The backstory behind Super Mario CD, three years after the release of Super Mario World in Japan, Nintendo wanted to get straight onto making a sequel to the popular Super Mario World so they decided to have a board meeting and were discussing potential sequels to Super Mario World. There is no info of the ideas they had but one of the ideas was a Mario game that would use a CD to compete with the Sega CD and they decided they wanted it to be a mix of 3D and 2D. According to an anonymous source this game was going to look like a normal Mario game but it would have the classic 2D platforming but the backgrounds would be 3D and would interact with the player's progression in that specific level, for example, if you were to play in a level with a bonsai bowl in it, you would see it in the background before it came for you and if you were about to encounter a boss you could see its airship in the level before flying past you getting you ready for the fight. They started design stuff down and creating sprites for the characters and also rendering the 3D backgrounds. It was one year into development and they were lacking in members so they had an idea and that idea was called Project, The Princess's Message. The Princess's Message, what this was coaxed down to employees reprogramming Super Mario World and putting a message at the end for however beat the game. The message read as followed congratulations, you beat Super Mario World. We at Nintendo are proud and we ask for you help to make the next Mario game. If you have any sort of background in programming please come to Nintendo's headquarters, Kyoto, Japan. Dot. This copy was shipped out to half of what Super Mario World originally shipped out and these copies made £512,735. Multiple people joined the project included one man that was the reason why the game is what it is today, Hayato Ito. Hayato was 27 when the game was being developed and he grabbed a copy of the game and when he saw the message he thought it was a joke so he called Nintendo to complain to them. The complaint was that he wanted a refund of the game and that he wanted a new copy as well so it was clear what kind of guy he was. The person on the over end said that it was actually real and that it was totally legit and that he should come done. Hayato actually had a background of programming in fact he worked at a pizzeria and he used to hack the arcade machine so he could see the children waste their coins in a game that doesn't even work. He seems to be very different but that's not the case really. Hayato was one of the programmers of the game and like I said before he was the main reason of why the game was left. He used to hack the game while people weren't looking like when they went home or went on lunch breaks. He would add subliminal images that according to members who worked on the game made them have nightmares. 
One employee who wants to be anonymous says this is what happened in his dream. In the dream, I was playing the game and after I beat the level and saw the clear screen, it got stuck in the screen and the music started to play one note of the clear theme making it sound almost satanic but then I saw Mario start to glitch out and then disappear on the screen. The room I was in was now just a black void and in the distance was Mario. He stood there and he seemed to speak in reverse. It wasn't the classic Mario voice it was a low pitched voice with a monotone tone to him. He was speaking in reverse and as he talked, it echoed in the void which made it all Tuesday more threatening. Then when Mario was finished speaking, a figure replaced Mario. The figure was a tall white figure and it seemed it had no eyes just two empty holes. The holes had a river of black coming out of it like it was crying but it couldn't have since it had a smile showing its small but sharp teeth, a lot of small sharp teeth in fact. I then heard children crying and at first it was soft but it got louder and louder like they were being killed but then I woke up in the puddle of sweat that was soaking my bed due to the intensity of the dream. At first this anonymous source didn't know it was Hayato or anything really in fact he thought it was maybe just because he was working on it too much but then the next day his friend told him he had the same nightmare and so they thought it had to do with the subliminal stuff and so they decided to run an experiment. They got two people to look at the subliminal image and two people not to look at it and the two people who saw the image had the same nightmare and the two who didn't were fine. But this was the cherry on the Sunday. It turns out that Hayato actually put a game of his in the game. You had to put a code in the menu which was as followed. Left slash down slash right slash down slash left slash up slash right slash down slash ZL slash ZR. And if you entered that code the game would glitch for 10 seconds and then it would be silent and leave you one a black screen for 39 seconds and then a title would load and it said insanity clockwork, beta 2.27. You might ask how I know but that will come back later. The fall of Super Mario CD, it turns out because Hayato out the subliminal stuff in as well as the game it turns out it was deleting levels from the game or destroying them making them into glitchy unplayable messes and the higher ups at Nintendo were getting impatient since the game was supposed to release two months before and so the employees decided to try and fix the problems but couldn't. The game was not looking good and so the higher ups decided to cancel the game on November 27, 1994 at 2.25 p.m. The aftermath, Nintendo gave the employees all contracts which said that all mentions of Super Mario CD were to not be talked about to anyone outside the project or else. It turns out now one who worked on this actually knew what or else meant and what it was supposed to mean in the context of the contract. When an employee was walking out of the building, Hayato walked past the employee since he was on his own and said all of this was my doing. And then walked off. It seemed so casual but it seemed in character Hayato because of his creepy way of telling people things. Super Mario CD playthrough, when I was researched this the original reddit post got deleted and so I tried to find someone who knew one of the original devs of the game and I was able to find someone. This person wants to go anonymous but thanks to him he was the one able to get most and nearly all the info for this post. We were talking and I asked him if he had a copy of the game or few levels I could maybe play and he actually did. He gave me the last four existing levels of the game as well as few screenshots but he said to me not to show them and just describe them. The last four levels are the first level of the game, a desert level, a castle level and an airship level. The first level starts with you looking at a semi remake of the 1 to 1 block placement. The area you are in is a forest and the background was a 3D forest obviously and you could see the trees blowing and could see details such as piranha plants and an airship that was flying between trees. You walked forward and you saw a hill you were supposed to walk sned then slide down it like in Super Mario World and then you saw the airship come from the background come into frame and fly past you and as you kept walking you saw a pipe that came from the airship dispensing Goombas. It had three pipes and they faced west, east, and south and one Goomba would come out of it and so I decided to take the south pipe and it took me to the airship. The airship was only one room and you could see the Goomba dispenser and if you entered the dispenser you could skip 3 slash 4 THS of the level. I obviously did but the pipe it took me to was next to a boss fight with Boom Boom and believe it looked amazing to see him. 
he was amazingly detailed and looked nearly 3D I think it was a 32-bit sprite. I beat the level and so I decided to do the insanity clockwork hack and so I restarted the game and input the code and it worked. I was able to start the game and I was frightened too. There was no info about the game I was told or saw and so what I saw next was strange. The game loaded you in a 3D environment. The game actually had the code from Wolfenstein 3D with the whole 2D to 3D thing and so it was just early FPS stuff. The area was dark and everywhere you walked a circle of light surrounded and that was the only light. I kept on walking and from the corner of my eye I saw something move. It sped along and when I turned to see it, it seemed that nothing was there so I decided to see the area it zoomed to. It was a door that lead to left and right and it zoomed to the left and so I went left. I kept walking and then I went to a dead end and I saw the thing that was in the nightmares. The tall white figure. It stared at me until an audio clip played if someone singing in reverse and it came to me and crashed my PC setup. My dreams didn't get any better in fact my dreams would consist of a dark area and then out of nowhere he appears and starts to chant something in reverse. I got up one night and I decided to destroy my PC and I was able to burn it. This marks the end of the video. If you like my content, consider subscribing as it helps me a lot. See you until next time.